Good morning. So a couple things I'd like to point out to you. First, if you see in the hallway, if you've come through there, there are tables with bins in them with lots of clothes. The clothes are for school-age children, uh, and they are free to take. This is from our clothes closet. If you know of anybody, and there's no questions asked, and there's no qualifications, anybody who wants to look through, and it's good stuff. Uh, some things still have tags on them, so especially the girl stuff, we have brand new stuff and, uh, for the taking. So if you know anybody who is in need of that, and we will leave that up until, probably till school starts in uh, end of August or September. <clears throat> Speaking of school starting, next week we're going to have a blessing for, um, and a sending off, for people who are going to college for the first time or returning to college. And then the week after that, we're going to have our blessing of the backpacks, which we've been doing for quite some time now. And so it's school-age kids from, well, however old they start wearing backpacks, and uh, all the way through high school. And we, we bless the backpacks, we bless the kids, and and uh, pray for them to keep their, uh, to carry their faith into their everyday life at school. I believe that's all that we need to announce for today. Is there anything else? The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share the peace. Our first hymn is Blessed Assurance. Please stand and follow the cross in.
to begin our worship with the order for confession and forgiveness in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the lessons. Good morning. The first reading is a reading from Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram had said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, this man shall not be your heir. No one but of your very own issues shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, look toward the heavens, count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. 
Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in that land that he had been promised as, a, as in a foreign land, living in tents as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desired a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So I saw something on Facebook recently that I you might have seen as well, but I want to share it because I really like it. It's little stories with meaning. Once all villagers decided to pray for rain. On the day of prayer, all the people gathered, but only one boy came with an umbrella. That's faith. When you throw babies in the air, they laugh because they know you will catch them. That's trust. Every night we go to bed without any assurance of being alive the next morning. 
but we still set the alarms to wake up. That's hope. We plan big things for tomorrow in spite of zero knowledge of the future. That's confidence. We see the world suffering, but we still get married and have children. That's love. On an old man's shirt was written a sentence, I'm not 80 years old. I'm sweet 16 with 64 years of experience. That's attitude. Faith, trust, hope, confidence, attitude, love. These are all gifts from God that fill our days. Let's have an amen to that. Amen. amen. Well, that's a nice, lively, awake amen. I was thinking about, I've been to churches where, where the air is filled with amens as the preacher, teach, uh, preacher preaches and as they sing and say the word of God. And uh, us Lutherans, we're a little quieter. I, I actually got a text once in the middle of a sermon that said amen. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, we got it, but we're, we're quieter about it, right? How's your amen today? Mine can get a little tired sometimes. Do you ever feel that way? I think of it as like, you know, like a lot of kids. I had to take piano lessons when I was little, and I really liked the idea of playing the piano. What I didn't like was what it took to get there. Practice the scales. Then my teacher would say, do it again, and I'd do it again, and again, and again. And, and all I wanted to do was play some songs. And, and when we finally got to that, the fun thing, the playing the, the simple little songs, I'd begin to play, and the teacher would stop me for some reason. And then she'd say, now begin again. I'd be like, oh. Of course, I know now what I didn't know then. It's like this with everything that's worth doing, right? Sometimes you have to do things a thousand times until it becomes second nature. You begin again and again until it's part of who you are. One of the kids on our summer mission trip had a t-shirt that said something like, don't practice until you get it right, practice until you can't get it wrong. The longer we live, the more we try to follow God, the more we run into this pattern. We follow, trust, run into obstacles, doubt, and begin again, and begin again, and again, and again. That makes my amen really tired. But it's also the pattern we see in the Bible over and over again. God began life in the garden, things got messed up, things changed, and it was time to begin again. A little while later, there's all sorts of problems, and God had to begin again with Noah's family. And on and on and on. God beginning again. Humanity beginning again. People beginning again. The first 11 chapters of Genesis paint these kind of beginnings with human beings and with the human condition. So we go from that kind of big picture into a very focused image today, really close up with one guy, Abram, or the guy we know as Abraham. In a way, the whole rest of the Bible, the whole story that's presented focuses on this one man's family, the family of Abraham from beginning to end. Now, Abram means exalted father. And that's kind of ironic because the guy doesn't even have children. At 75 years old, he and his wife, Sarai, don't have kids, are too old to have kids. But in chapter 12, God makes a promise to Abram. 
God says, I will bless you. I will make you a great nation. In you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Well, you kind of got to have children in order to become a great nation, Lord. Ah, oh, trust me, God says. And Abram trusted God's promise and moved with his wife and his entire estate over 700 miles to the land of Canaan. And of course, a whole bunch of stuff happens along the way, and then they decide to leave Canaan because there was a famine bad enough that they went to Egypt. And in Egypt, Abram, Abram got all concerned that Pharaoh was going to take Sarai away from him. And then they went back to Canaan and had to fight a war to save his nephew Lot. And every time, it was like, okay, begin again. Start all over. Keep moving forward. And every time, God protected Abram. God kept making the promises, renewing them, reminding them, because Abram started to doubt. His amen was getting a little bit tired. By Genesis 15, Abram's like, oh, it's been a while, Lord. Not getting any younger, you know. The only heir I have is my servant Eleazar. Is that how you're going to make a great nation? Through that guy? So the Lord takes Abram out to look up at the night sky. Now, just take a minute here and, and think about the most spectacular display of stars you have ever seen. Can you picture them in your mind? Mine was in Madagascar, where there's literally no ambient light because they turn the electricity off at night. And so it's so, so dark. But you can look up and see all the stars. Count the stars, Abram. I can't, Lord. There's too many. That, my son, is how many children you will have. You have to trust me. I can see the Lord standing there, kind of like my piano teacher, who had more faith in me than I did. Now again, trust me, the Lord says. Again and again and again, trust me. Genesis tells us, Abram said, Amen to the Lord. Amen. The Bible says he believed the Lord. Even at 100 years old, he believed that he would have the children God promised. And the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. He believed. Now that word believe in Hebrew, and I'm not great at pronouncing Hebrew, but what do you know, right? <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Amen, something like that. It's where we get the word amen from. Believe and amen are connected. It means to trust. It has at its roots the idea of being held in a mother's arm like a suckling baby. It is complete an utter abandonment in trust. God said, I got this. And Abram said, Amen. Amen. He trusted God to do the impossible. I want to share with you what the Apostle Paul said uh, in his letter to the Galatians. Just as Abram believed, Amen. God and believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, so you see those who believe, amen, are the descendants of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith declared the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, all the Gentiles shall be blessed in you. For this reason, those who believe, amen, are blessed with Abraham, who believed. Amen. So how's your amen today? A little tired? 
Do you find yourself wondering what else could go wrong? Thinking you've had enough already? Waiting and waiting for the promises to come? Sometimes just when life gets good, it all gets swept away. Sometimes you have to start again and again and again. Sometimes our hope gets swallowed up in the stuff of life. Of course, COVID has, has done this to us and we are tired of it. And it hasn't gone away. In fact, just this weekend, the infection rate surged again to a high level. And we begin again. How long can a person take the loneliness and the isolation of this time and the caution and the worry? None of us knew how COVID-19 would reshape how we live our lives. But it has, and it will some more. I have to admit, my amen gets a little tired. And yet a funny thing happens along the way. I believe God is taking each of us right now out under the night sky. Look up and can you count the stars? And now we begin again. Because God is faithful. God is faithful. And that's what really counts. Amen. Say it with me. Amen. Living together as one body in Christ, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Holy Spirit, teach us to trust your direction. Help us to have confidence in your guidance, 
turn our lives into powerful demonstrations of what trust in God looks like. Bless our ministries close to home with our offerings of food for the North Hills Community Outreach and art and school supplies for the Westview Hub and support of Berkeley Hills Lutheran Church. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord of Lords, your abundant power has created the church, Christ's body. May we work together as members of that body using the gifts and abilities you have given each of us to faithfully serve one another. Strengthen us in our journeys at home, in our work, in this congregation, and in the community. Shower your blessings upon the pastors of our church, all who help in its upkeep, and everyone who attends in fellowship. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Prince of Peace, thank you that we are never alone. Your presence calms the troubled seas of our lives and speaks peace to our souls. May your love be the passion in our hearts and your joy be our strength when times are hard. Be with those today who are struggling, especially those who we name in our hearts now. May we find the time to reach out to someone whom we just named with a phone call, a meal, a hug, a visit. We trust you will guide us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Creator Father, send us out today renewed and open to experience all that is wonderful in this world. The beautiful music and fellowship of today's worship service the awesome display of the flowers and weeds and fruit trees and animals, sunny days, star-filled night skies and powerful rainstorms, the hills that surround and the rivers that flow through our city and all the people that you have created in your image. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen.
God does many things through our offerings. We give thanks that your offerings enable us to provide space for the ministry of Meals on Wheels, which, among other things, helps people to remain safely in their homes. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus Christ, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and his promise to come again, we await, his, his, we await him in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> we join together, please, in the prayer our Lord taught us, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For those of you who are communing at home, please take your bread, the body of Christ given for you, and now your cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. For those of you who are communing here, please come and receive.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord to make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.